powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Remembering those who have served and sacrificed for our freedom. Some gathered, others chose to honor our veterans from afar in the midst of the current pandemic. Those ceremonies playing out today across our community, state and country. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Well, today America honored those who gave their lives defending our country. And while the meaning of Memorial Day has not changed, the way we marked it certainly has in light of the coronavirus restrictions. It's often said that freedom isn't free. You need only look at the gravestones here at Yellowstone National Cemetery to see the cost for yourself. Unlike past years, there was no Memorial Day service for the public to attend, but that didn't stop many people from showing up to pay their respects. Due to COVID-19 and to keep everyone safe, the Friends of the National Cemetery have put together this virtual Memorial Day service to honor those veterans who have passed. Instead of traditional ceremonies, services were recorded ahead of time and played online. On this Memorial Day, we pray for those who courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. In just the last century, over 650,000 servicemen and women have given their lives in defense of our freedom and our way of life. Today is about remembering those men and women who never had a chance to become veterans. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America. America. In virtual services recorded at Mount View Cemetery in Billings, Mayor Bill Cole compared the coronavirus crisis to a war. And so in a very real sense, we are at war with this disease, a war that requires courage, patience, service to one another, perseverance. And there's no group of Americans who understand courage and perseverance and service to one another better than our veterans. And while the coronavirus may have changed the way America marked this Memorial Day, it did not change the meaning of it as we recognize the debt we owe to those who gave all. And you can still watch the services online on the Friends of the Yellowstone National Cemetery Facebook page. Well, President Trump marked Memorial Day with not one but two different events. The White House is increasing the president's public schedule as he pushes for America to reopen. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. President Trump honored the military as well as those who have lost their lives as a result of the coronavirus during a Memorial Day ceremony in Baltimore. We mourn alongside every single family that has lost loved ones, including the families of our great veterans. He also praised the service members who've been called to duty during the pandemic. Tens of thousands of service members and National Guardsmen are on the front lines of our war against this terrible virus, caring for patients, delivering critical supplies, and working night and day to safeguard our citizens. Earlier in the day, dignitaries practiced social distancing as the president laid a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. President Trump has stepped up his trips outside of the White House as he pushes governors to reopen the country, and he's now indicating he wants an in-person Republican National Convention this August. Monday morning, the president insisted North Carolina's Democratic governor give the RNC an answer about if his state will be open by then or he threatened to find a new site. If needs be, moving uh, the National Convention uh, to a state that uh, that is farther along on reopening and, and can say with confidence that, that we can gather there. Democratic leaders have not yet said if they will still hold an in-person convention in Milwaukee this August. Joe Biden, the presumptive nominee, made his first public appearance since the lockdowns began when he visited a memorial in his home state of Delaware. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. The Democratic convention had been scheduled for July, but DNC officials made the decision in April to delay it until August because of the pandemic. 
Well, more and more people are feeling comfortable enough to leave their homes and hop in a car for business or pleasure. If you happen to be in the market, now might be the best time in years to buy a new car. Q2's Mitch Leggy checked in with two Billings dealerships to find out why. Car dealerships are always motivated to move vehicles off the lot. With people slowly getting back on the road and out of their homes, many dealerships are offering loans on new cars with rates not seen in years. It's probably been four or five years since rates have been as low as they are right now. Fisher has been selling cars with Lithia for nine years. He said buyers with good credit can find loans on new cars for close to 0% interest for 84 months. The manufacturers, you know, us or anyone else, don't want to slow down. So what do they have to do? They have to find a way that entices a buyer to come in, and it's our job to provide a level of service that they want to do it here. Fisher said it's relatively rare for domestic car dealerships to offer 0% interest. You typically see that deal on new import vehicles. Another Billings dealership, Hertz Car Sales, operates on a different business model, selling used cars from a fleet of rentals. General Manager Keith McNally said business has picked up within the last month. We've sold a lot of cars. They held back some rental cars, which, you know, they weren't sure what was going to happen in the market. Um, and now i got cars coming in every day, as you notice all these cars over here to the side. But we're trying to catch up because we're selling a bunch of them, too. So it's a great time to buy cars because the values are great right now. McNally said Hertz usually sells about 120 cars a month and is on track to meet that goal in May. Now, you may have seen news about Hertz corporate laying off employees and filing for bankruptcy. The Billings community can be assured that the local Hertz is not caught up in any of that trouble because it's independently owned. We are a licensee, so we have the benefits of the company name, but we're individually owned, so we have our own uh, bill system and, and pay system and totally different nothing of the debt that Hertz Corporate has. In Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, thanks, Mitch. Now turning to Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire, and after kind of a chilly weekend, <laughs> yeah. the heat is on its way in a big way. Oh, yeah, well, let me show you how cold it got. We're going to talk about some snow. Look at all the snow up there in the Beartooths. Yeah, look at this. It's five miles west of Red Lodge. They had 13 inches of snow up there near Wilsell, eight inches. Oh, Luther had four inches. Same thing near Livingston, uh, three miles northeast of Red Lodge at 3.5 inches of uh, snow. And then take a look at some of the rainfall amounts near Fishtail, almost two inches, one and a half inches of rain over at Eagle near Absorb and also by uh, Bridger. Also uh, 1.35 inches expected. Well, that's what they had uh, seven miles east of Columbus. But take a look what's going to happen. The next several days, it is going to be comfortable. We're talking room temperatures tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, down into the 70s. But then after that, Friday, one transition day up to 82 degrees. Then on Saturday, Sunday, and even into Monday, we'll be talking temperatures in the 90s. We'll have more about that in a few more minutes. All right, thank you, Bob. A man is in critical but stable condition tonight after being attacked by a grizzly bear in Big Sky today. FWP told MTN the surprise encounter happened a little after one this afternoon. The man was mountain biking, came around a curve on a trail above Azul Falls on private property in the Spanish Peaks area and was attacked. He was able to make it out to the road and make contact with other people. He suffered injuries to his face and back and was airlifted here to Billings. Wardens and bear specialists were on the scene and say it doesn't appear to be a predatory attack with no indication the bear was chasing him. The trail has been closed. Well, two big court rulings affecting how absentee ballots are cast and counted here in Montana came down late last Friday. And now the issues are headed to the Montana Supreme Court. The ruling by a state judge in Billings less than two weeks before primary election day blocked two Montana laws that he said are illegally suppressing votes. MTN Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison explains. The ruling came in a lawsuit filed by the Montana Democratic Party and another Democratic group challenging two Montana laws. The Ballot Interference Prevention Act, which restricts who can pick up and deliver absentee ballots, and another law that says absentee ballots that are mailed must arrive at county election offices by 8 p.m. election day. The suit said both laws make it more difficult for certain people to vote or have their votes counted and therefore are an unconstitutional violation of the right to vote. Late Friday, State District Judge Don Harris of Billings agreed. He issued an order that bars the state from enforcing either law. And he said any absentee ballot that is postmarked by election day on June 2nd and arrives at the county election office by June 8th must be counted. He said the two laws will significantly suppress voter turnout by unduly burdening voters who are Native American, elderly, disabled, poor, college students, first-time voters, or parents working low-wage jobs. And Harris rejected the state's argument that the Ballot Interference Prevention Act combats voter fraud, 
saying there has never been a documented case of absentee ballot collection fraud in Montana. State Democratic Party Chair Robin Driscoll hailed the ruling, saying there's no good reason why a ballot should be thrown out because it arrives too late in the mail. Harris's ruling on the Ballot Interference Prevention Act also comes two days after a different judge blocked the same law in a separate lawsuit by Montana Indian tribes. But the issue isn't over. Montana Attorney General Tim Fox's office has asked that Harris's ruling be put on hold while Fox appeals it to the Montana Supreme Court. Fox says the rules on voting should not be changed so soon before the election. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Meanwhile, Montanans are voting in the state's first all-mail-in statewide election. As of yesterday, more than 211,000 Montanans had already returned their ballots in for the June 2nd primary. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, a Montana ranch aimed at helping others, now looking for some help itself in order to stay afloat. And in sports, we already knew that the PBR will soon let fans back in the arena, but Scott has an interesting tidbit you probably didn't know. Details coming up in just a bit. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.